Second fundamental theorem of calculus. If f is continuous on an open interval i containing a, then for every x in the interval, if we take the derivative of this integral, definite integral, from a to x, where a is a constant, x is a function, of f of t dt with respect to x, then that's going to equal f of x. And I'll go through the proof. Okay, so there's two different, two different proofs, two different ways we can look at it. So one, okay, if we take the derivative, that's what this is saying, of this definite integral, which is this guy, from a to x, where a is a constant, x is a function, of f of t dt with respect to x. Okay, so first of all, um, here's the derivative with respect to x. Okay, um, this right here is the integrand, that is the function that we are integrating. And when we integrate that, that becomes the antiderivative, so f, big F of t. And then we're going to evaluate that from a to x. Okay? When we evaluate it from a to x, first we're going to plug in x into the antiderivative, and then we're going to subtract and then plug in a. So we'll get to that point here. Okay? Next we'll take the derivative, we'll take the derivative of the antiderivative with respect to x. We're also going to take the derivative of the antiderivative of a, which remember this is just going to be a constant with respect to x. Okay, so when we take the derivative of the antiderivative as a function, okay, that's going to take you back to f of x. And when you take the derivative of a constant, that's going to end up being zero. So that's why this is equal to f of x. Let's look at this a different way. Okay, proof two. Okay, so we're trying to prove the second fundamental theorem of calculus again. We're taking the derivative of a definite integral with respect to x where the limits of integration are a, a constant to some function x of f of t dt, that the result should equal f of x. x is a function and a is a constant. So, um, let's start with this, okay? This time, the f of t is going to be t cubed, so we're going to use t cubed, okay? The first thing we're going to do is find the antiderivative, okay? So notice that if you have f of t equals um, t cubed, the antiderivative of f of t would be uh, t to the fourth over four. Okay, so this notation indicates um, you're taking the antiderivative of f and then plugging in x there. This indicates here you're taking the antiderivative of f of t, but we're plugging in a for t. Okay, so maybe another way that we could have done this, we could have done f, the derivative of the derivative with respect to x of f of t from a to x. So maybe I should have put that step in there and then go to here. Okay, then um, let's see, big F of X, okay, 
So the antiderivative, um, notice that f, f of t would be um, t to the fourth over four, all right, plus c. Okay, so f, big F of x would be x to the fourth over four plus c. Okay, and since it's a definite integral, we're plugging in x here. We don't need the c's, so that would go here. And then f, f of a, again, you would plug a in here for t, and you'd get this a to the fourth over four, so that's just a constant. Then, then if I take the derivative of this with respect to x, the, the derivative of x to the fourth over four, that would be x cubed, right, because I would do the power rule, so it would be 4 times x cubed divided by 4, 4's four would cancel out, and then this is the derivative of a constant, a is a constant, all of that stuff still make it a constant, so this is going to end up being x cubed minus 0, which is x cubed, and x cubed would be f of x, okay? If, if f of t is t cubed, then f of x would be x cubed. So hopefully you're following this proof here. You, to apply it, the majority of times you really just have to memorize this and to be able to apply it and know when you can apply it. Let's do this example. Evaluate this function. So it says the antiderivative at big F of x equals the integral from 0 to x of um, cosine of t dt. Okay? So first of all, remember if we took the derivative of sine of x, we would get cosine of x. So um, the antiderivative would go this way. So the antiderivative of cosine of t would be sine of t, and then we are going to evaluate that from 0 to x. So this is going to be sine of x minus sine of 0. Sine of 0 is, of course, 0, so this would be sine of x. Okay, so this doesn't really apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus. It just kind of is similar. And then they want us to do this. They want us to figure out um, f of 0, so sine of 0. Then they want us to do f of pi over 6, so sine of pi over 6. Then f of pi over 4, which is sine of pi over 4. Then f of pi thirds, which is sine of pi thirds, and then finally f, big F of pi halves, which would be sine of pi halves. So now let's evaluate all of these. Sine of zero is zero. Sine of 30 degrees, that's going to be one half. Sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Um, sine of 90 degrees is going to be 1.